Indonesian cuisine is one of the most vibrant and colorful cuisines in the world, full of intense flavor. It is eclectic and diverse, in part because Indonesia is composed of approximately 6,000 populated islands of the total 17,508 in the world's largest archipelago, with more than 300 ethnic groups calling Indonesia home. Many regional cuisines exist, often based upon indigenous culture and foreign influences. Indonesia has around 5,350 traditional recipes, with 30 of them considered the most important. Indonesia's cuisine may include rice, noodle and soup dishes in modest local eateries to street-side snacks and top dollar plates. Indonesian cuisine varies greatly by region and has many different influences. Sumatran cuisine, for example, often has Middle Eastern and Indian influences, featuring curried meat and vegetables such as gulai and curry, while Javanese cuisine is mostly indigenous, with some hint of Chinese influence. The cuisines of eastern Indonesia are similar to Polynesian and Melanesian cuisine. Elements of Chinese cuisine can be seen in Indonesian cuisine. Foods such as noodles, meat balls, and spring rolls have been completely assimilated. Throughout its history, Indonesia has been involved in trade due to its location and natural resources. Additionally, Indonesia's indigenous techniques and ingredients were influenced by India, the Middle East, China, and finally Europe. Spanish and Portuguese traders brought New World produce even before the Dutch came to colonize most of the archipelago. The Indonesian islands the Moluccas Maluku, which are famed as the Spice Islands, also contributed to the introduction of native spices, such as cloves and nutmeg, to Indonesian and global cuisine. Indonesian cuisine often demonstrates complex flavor, acquired from certain ingredients and bamboo spices mixture. Indonesian dishes have rich flavors, most often described as savory, hot and spicy, and also combination of basic tastes such as sweet, salty, sour and bitter. Most of Indonesians favor hot and spicy food, thus sambal, Indonesian hot and spicy chili sauce with shrimp paste, is a staple condiment at all Indonesian tables. Seven main Indonesian cooking methods are frying, grilling, roasting, dry roasting, sautéing, boiling and steaming. Some popular Indonesian dishes such as nasi goreng, gado gado, satay, and soto are ubiquitous in the country and considered as national dishes. The official national dish of Indonesia however, is tumpung, chosen in 2014 by Indonesian Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy as the dish that binds the diversity of Indonesia's various culinary traditions. However, later in 2018, the same ministry has chosen five national dish of Indonesia, they are soto, rendang, satay, nasi goreng, and gado gado. Today, some popular dishes that originated in Indonesia are now common to neighboring countries, Malaysia and Singapore. Indonesian dishes such as satay, beef rendang, and sambal are favored in Malaysia and Singapore. Soy-based dishes, such as variations of tofu and tempeh, are also very popular. Tempeh is regarded as a Javanese invention, a local adaptation of soy-based food fermentation and production. Another fermented food is onkam, similar in some ways to tempeh but using a variety of bases not only soy, created by different fungi, and particularly popular in West Java. History Indonesian cuisine has a long history, although most of them are not well documented, and relied heavily on local practice and oral traditions. A rare instance however, is demonstrated by Javanese cuisine that somewhat has quite a well documented culinary tradition. The diversity ranges from ancient bakar batu or stone grilled yams and boar practiced by Papuan tribes of eastern Indonesia, to sophisticated contemporary Indonesian fusion cuisine. The ethnic diversity of Indonesian archipelago provides an eclectic combination mixing local Javanese, Sundanese, Balinese, Minang, Malay, and other native cuisine traditions, with centuries worth of foreign contacts with Indian traders, Chinese migrants, and Dutch colonials. Rice has been an essential staple for Indonesian society, as bas reliefs of 9th century Borobudur and Prambanan describes rice farming in ancient Java. Ancient dishes were mentioned in many Javanese inscriptions and historians have succeeded in deciphering some of them. The inscriptions from Madang Mataram era circa 8th to 10th century mentioned several ancient dishes, among others are Hadan Hara minced water buffalo meat satay, similar with today Balinese sat lilit, Hadan Madura water buffalo meat simmered with sweet palm sugar, and Dundu Puyangan eel seasoned with lemon basil. 
Also various hara hara grilled meats either chelan, wok, pork, hadahan, kbo water buffalo, kita, knas deer or wadis goat. Ancient beverages include nalaka rasa sugarcane juice, jatiwangi jasmine beverage, and kinka tamarind juice. Also various kaluban boiled vegetables served in spices, similar with today yurap and falamula boiled yams and tubers served with liquid palm sugar. Other ancient vegetable dishes include rumwa rumwa lalap, dudatan raw vegetables and tetis. The 9th century old Javanese Kakawan Ramayana mentioned cooking technique as trijata offered sita some food kanto 17.101, scrumptious food of landuga tatlatila cooked with oil and matakanda sagula sugared delicacies. Several food were mentioned in several Javanese inscriptions dated from 10th century to 15th century. Some of these dishes are identified with present-day Javanese foods. Among others are pasel, pindang, rarawan, ron, rurujak, rujak, karupuk, krupuk, sweets like wajik and dodal, also beverages like davit. In the 15th century Sundanese manuscript Sanghyang Siksa Kandong Karijan, it was mentioned the common food flavors of that times, which includes lawana, salty, kaduka, hot and spicy, trika, bitter, amba, sour, kasaya, savory, and madura, sweet. By the 13th to 15th century, coastal Indonesian polities began to absorb culinary influences from India. And the Middle East, as evidence with the adoption of curry like recipes in the region. This was especially affirmative in the coastal towns of Aceh, Manangkabau lands of West Sumatra, and Malay ports of Sumatra and Malay Peninsula. Subsequently, those culinary traditions displayed typical Indian culinary influences, such as care, curry, roti cane, and gulai. This was also went hand in hand with the adoption of Islamic faith, thus, encouraged halal Muslim dietary law that omits pork. On the other hand, the indigenous inhabitant that resides inland, such as the Bataks and Dayaks, retains their older Austronesian culinary traditions, which incorporate bushmeat, pork and blood in their daily diet. According to the 17th century account of Rykloff van Goens, the ambassador of the VOC for Sultan Agung's Javanese Mataram court, the techniques of meat processing sheep, goats, and buffalo during celebration in Java, was by grilling and frying the seasoned meat. However, unlike European, the Javanese only use coconut oil instead of butter. Chinese immigrants have settled in Indonesian archipelago as early as Majapahit period circa 15th century CE, and accelerated during Dutch colonial period. The Chinese settlers introduced stir frying technique that required the use of Chinese wok and small amount of cooking oil. They also introduced some Chinese foodstuff including soy sauce, noodles, and soybean processing technique to make tofu. Subsequently, soybean processing led to the possibly accidental discovery of tempeh fermented soybean cake. The earliest known reference to tempeh appeared in 1815 in the Javanese manuscript of Surat Senthini. The vigor of spice trade during the Age of Exploration has brought European traders to Indonesian shores. Subsequently, European colonialism was established in the 19th century Dutch East Indies. The influences of European cuisine most notably the Portuguese and Dutch, has introduced European techniques, especially in bread making, pastries, cookies and cake baking. Indonesian culinary tradition has been exposed to various influences. Regarding the method of food processing techniques, each region has developed a specificity that ultimately leads to localization of regional taste. <laughs> Customs, serving and consumption Indonesian traditional meals usually consists of steamed rice as staple, surrounded by vegetables and soup and meat or fish side dishes. In a typical family meal, the family members gather around the table filled with steamed rice and several other dishes. Each dish is placed in a separate communal large plate or in bowls. Each of these dishes has its own serving spoons, used only to take parts of the dishes from the communal plate into one's own personal plate. Each of the family members has their own personal plate that is first filled with steamed rice. Usually the oldest family member or the husband has the right to initiate the meal, followed by the rest of the family to help themselves with the dishes. Each of them takes some portion of dishes from the communal plates into their own individual plates. On their personal plate, the steamed rice will soon be surrounded by two, three or more dishes, vegetables and fish or meat, and maybe some fried dishes, sambal and krupuk. In Indonesian customs—unlike in Japanese counterpart, 
It is quite acceptable to be seen to mix the different flavored dishes in a single personal plate during consumption. A practice commonly found in nasi champur, nasi padang, or during a buffet. The soupy dish however, might be served in a separate small personal bowl. Today in contemporary Indonesian restaurants, the set menu is often offered. This has led to the personal serving practice, in similar fashion to those of Japanese cuisine, with a personal plate on a tray, a rattan or bamboo container each with a separate small portion of dishes surrounding the rice. This can be found in the presentation of nasi bali. Indonesian meals are commonly eaten with the combination of a spoon in the right hand and fork in the left hand to push the food onto the spoon. Unlike European dining custom, knife however, is absent from dining table, thus most of the ingredients such as vegetables and meat are already cut into bite-sized pieces prior of cooking. Although, in many parts of the country, such as West Java and West Sumatra, it is also common to eat with one's bare hands. In restaurants or households that commonly use bare hands to eat, such as seafood food stalls, traditional Sundanese and Manangkabau restaurants, or East Javanese pasel lele fried catfish with sambal and ayam goreng fried chicken food stalls, koboken is usually served along with the food. Koboken is a bowl of tap water with a slice of lime in it to give a fresh scent. This bowl of water is not intended for consumption, rather it is used to wash one's hand before and after eating. Eating with chopsticks is generally only found in food stalls or restaurants serving Indonesian adaptations of Chinese cuisine, such as bakmi or mie ayam chicken noodle with pangsit wonton, mie goreng fried noodles, and kwetiau goreng fried flat rice noodles. <laughs> Staples Rice Rice is a staple for all classes in contemporary Indonesia, and it holds the central place in Indonesian culture, it shapes the landscape, is sold at markets, and is served in most meals both as a savory and a sweet food. The importance of rice in Indonesian culture is demonstrated through the reverence of Dewi Shri, the rice goddess of ancient Java and Bali. Traditionally the agricultural cycles linked to rice cultivations were celebrated through rituals, such as Sarantan Rice Harvest Festival. Rice is most often eaten as plain rice with just a few protein and vegetable dishes as side dishes. It is also served, however, as nasi uduk rice cooked in coconut milk, nasi kuning rice cooked with coconut milk and turmeric, katupat rice steamed in woven packets of coconut fronds, lontong rice steamed in banana leaves, intip or renghinong rice crackers, desserts, vermicelli, noodles, arak beras rice wine, and nasi goreng fried rice. Nasi goreng is omnipresent in Indonesia and considered as national dish. Rice was only incorporated into diets, however, as either the technology to grow it or the ability to buy it from elsewhere was gained. Evidence of wild rice on the island of Sulawesi dates from 3000 BCE. Evidence for the earliest cultivation, however, comes from the 8th century stone inscriptions from the central island of Java, which shows that kings levied taxes in rice. The images of rice cultivation, rice barns, and pest mice infesting a rice field is evident in Karmawabanga Ba reliefs of Borobudur. Divisions of labor between men, women, and animals that are still in place in Indonesian rice cultivation, were carved into relief friezes on the 9th century Prambanan temples in central Java, a water buffalo attached to a plow, women planting seedlings and pounding grain, and a man carrying sheaves of rice on each end of a pole across his shoulders in the 16th century, Europeans visiting the Indonesian islands saw rice as a new prestige food served to the aristocracy during ceremonies and feasts. Rice production in Indonesian history is linked to the development of iron tools and the domestication of wild Asian water buffalo as water buffalo for cultivation of fields and manure for fertilizer. Rice production requires exposure to the sun. Once covered in dense forest, much of the Indonesian landscape has been gradually cleared for permanent fields and settlements as rice cultivation developed over the last 1500 years. <laughs> Wheat Wheat is not a native plant to Indonesia, however through imports and foreign influences—most notably Chinese and Dutch Indonesians began to develop a taste for wheat-based foodstuff, especially Chinese noodles, Indian roti, and Dutch bread. Other than common steamed rice, the Chinese in Indonesia also considered noodles, bakpao and kakwe as staples. 
Yet in Indonesia, especially in Java and Sumatra, the rice culture was so prevalent that sometimes these wheat-based dishes, such as noodles are treated as side dishes and are consumed with rice, while others such as Chinese buns and kakwe are treated as snacks. The European, especially the Portuguese and the Dutch, introduced bread and various type of bakery and pastry. These European staples have now become alternatives for a quick breakfast. The Indonesian wheat consumption reached a new height after the advent of Indonesian instant noodle industry back in the 1970s. Since then Indonesia has become one of the world's major producers and consumers of instant noodles. Today, instant noodles have become a staple in Indonesian households for quick hot meals. Certain brands such as Indomie have become household names. Other staples. Other staple foods in Indonesia include a number of starchy tubers such as yam, sweet potato, potato, taro and cassava. Starchy fruit such as breadfruit and jackfruit and grains such as maize are eaten. A sago kanji called papeda is a staple food especially in Maluku and Papua. Sago is often mixed with water and cooked as a simple pancake. Next to sago, people of eastern Indonesia consume wild tubers as staple food. Many types of tubers such as talas a type of taro but larger and more bland and breadfruit are native to Indonesia, while others were introduced from elsewhere. Yam was introduced from Africa, while potato, sweet potato, cassava and maize were introduced from the Americas through Spanish influence and reached Java in the 17th century. Cassava is usually boiled, steamed, fried or processed as a popular snack Kripik Singkong cassava crackers. Dried cassava, locally known as Tiwul, is an alternate staple food in arid areas of Java such as Gunung Kittel and Wanogiri, while other roots and tubers are eaten especially in hard times. Maize is eaten in drier regions such as Madura and islands east of the Wallace Line, such as the Lesser Sunda Islands. <laughs> Vegetables A number of leaf vegetables are widely used in Indonesian cuisine, such as kongkun, spinach, ginger, malinjo, papaya and cassava leaves. These are often sautéed with garlic. Spinach and corn are used in simple clear watery vegetable soup sayur bayam bening flavored with temu kuncha, garlic and shallot. Clear vegetable soup includes sayur oying. Other vegetables like calabash, chayote, keller, yardlong bean, eggplant, gambas and belastru, are cut and used in stir-fries, curries and soups like sayur asam, sayur lode or laksa. Don ubi tumbuk is pounded cassava leaves dish, commonly found in Sumatra, Kalimantan and Sulawesi. Sayur sop is cabbage, cauliflower, potato, carrot, with macaroni spiced with black pepper, garlic and shallot in chicken or beef broth. The similar mixed vegetables are also stir-fried as kap kai, a popular dish of the Chinese Indonesian cuisine. Tumas kongkun is a popular stir-fried water spinach dish. Vegetables like winged bean, tomato, cucumber and the small variety of bitter melon are commonly eaten raw, like in lalab. The large bitter melon variety is usually boiled. Kekumrung and papaya flower buds are a common Indonesian vegetable. Urap is seasoned and spiced shredded coconut mixed together with vegetables, asinan batawi are preserved vegetables. Gado gado and pasel are a salad of boiled vegetables dressed in a peanut-based spicy sauce, while karadik is its raw version. <laughs> Vegetarianism in Indonesia Vegetarianism is well represented in Indonesia, as there is a wide selection of vegetarian dishes and meat substitutes that may be served. Dishes such as gado gado, keradik, ketoprak, taj goreng, pasel, urap, rujak and asinan are vegetarian dishes. However, dishes that use peanut sauce, such as gado gado, keradik or ketoprak, might contain small amounts of shrimp paste, called turasi, for flavor. Shrimp paste is also often used to add flavor to spicy sambal chili paste served with lalap assorted fresh vegetables. Fermented soy products, such as tempeh, tahu, tofu, and onkam are prevalent as meat substitutes and as a source of vegetable protein. 
In contemporary fusion cuisine, tempeh is used to replace meat patties and served as tempeh burger. Most Indonesians do not practice strict vegetarianism and may consume vegetables or vegetarian dishes for their taste, preference, economic, and health reasons. Nevertheless, there are small numbers of Indonesian Buddhists that practice vegetarianism for religious reasons. Meat and fish The main animal protein sources in the Indonesian diet are mostly poultry and fish, however meats such as beef, water buffalo, goat and mutton are commonly found in the Indonesian marketplaces. Poultry The most common poultry consumed is chicken and duck, however to a lesser amount, pigeon, quail and wild swamp birds such as watercock are also consumed. Traditionally, Indonesians breed free-range chicken in the villages known as ayam kampung village chicken. Compared to common domesticated chicken, these village chicken are thinner and their meat are slightly firmer. Various recipes of ayam goreng fried chicken and ayam bakar grilled chicken are commonly found throughout Indonesia. Other than frying or grilling, chicken might be cooked as soup, such as sup ayam and soto ayam, or cooked in coconut milk as opor ayam. Chicken satay is also commonly found in Indonesia, it is a barbecued meat on skewer served with peanut sauce. Popular chicken recipes such as ayam goreng kalasan from Yogyakarta, ayam bakar padang from Padang, ayam taliwang from Lombok, ayam batutu from Bali, and ayam goreng lengkuas galangal fried chicken. Meat Beef and goat meat are the most commonly consumed meats in Indonesia, while kerbau water buffalo and domestic sheep are also consumed to a lesser degree, since water buffalo are more useful for plowing the rice paddies, while sheep are kept for their wool or to be used for the traditional entertainment of ram fighting. As a country with an Islamic majority, Indonesian Muslims follows the Islamic halal dietary law which forbids the consumption of pork. However, in other parts of Indonesia where there are significant numbers of non-Muslims, boar and pork are commonly consumed. Dishes made of non-halal meats can be found in provinces such as Bali, North Sumatra, North Sulawesi, East Nusa Tenggara, Maluku, West Papua, Papua, and also in the Chinatowns of major Indonesian cities. Today to cater for the larger Muslim market, most of the restaurants and eating establishments in Indonesia put halal signs that signify that they serve neither pork nor any non-halal meats, nor do they use lard in their cooking. With an overwhelming Muslim population and a relatively small population of cattle, today Indonesians rely heavily on imported beef from Australia, New Zealand and the United States which often results in a scarcity and raised prices of beef in the Indonesian market. The meat can be cooked in rich spices and coconut milk such as beef, goat or lamb rendang, skewered, seasoned and grilled chicken or mutton as satay, barbecued meats, or sliced and cooked in rich broth soup as soto. Muttons and various offals can be used as ingredients for soto soup or gulai curry. In Bali, with its Hindu majority, the babi guling pig roast is popular among locals as well as non-Muslim visitors, while the Batak people of North Sumatra have babi pongong that is a similar dish. Wild boar are also commonly consumed in Papua. The meat also can be processed to be thinly sliced and dried as dendeng jerky, or made into aban meat floss. Dendeng selling is Indonesian dried, jerked boar meat. Raised rabbits are also consumed as food in mountainous region of Indonesia. Some exotic and rare game meat such as venison might be sold and consumed in wilder parts of Indonesia. In West Nusa Tenggara, East Nusa Tenggara, and Papua, deer meat can be found, usually wildly acquired by hunting. Other unusual and often controversial exotic meats include frog legs consumed in Chinese Indonesian cuisine, horse meat consumed in Yogyakarta and West Nusa Tenggara, turtle meat consumed in Bali and eastern Indonesia, snake, biawa, monitor lizard, paniki, fruit bats, dog meat, and field rats, consumed in Manahazan cuisine of North Sulawesi. Batak cuisine of North Sumatra is also familiar with cooking dog meat. Topic: <inaudible> Fish. In an archipelago each nation, seafood is abundant and it is commonly consumed especially by Indonesian residents in coastal areas. 
Fish is especially popular in the eastern Indonesian regions of Sulawesi and Maluku, where most of the people work as fishermen. Both areas have a vast sea which brings them many different kinds of seafood. Popular seafood in Indonesian cuisine among others Skipjack tuna, tuna, mackerel, pomfret, wahoo, milkfish, trevally, rabbitfish, garupa, red snapper, anchovy, swordfish, shark, stingray, squid or cuttlefish, shrimp, crab, blue crab, and mussel. Seafood is commonly consumed across Indonesia, but it is especially popular in Maluku Islands and Manahasa North Sulawesi cuisine. Seafood are usually being grilled, boiled or fried. Ikan bakar is a popular grilled fish dish that can be found throughout Indonesia. However another method of cooking like stir-fried in spices or in soup is also possible. Salted fish is preserved seafood through cured in salt, it is also can be found in Indonesian market. Fresh water fisheries can be found in inland regions or in areas with large rivers or lakes. Fresh water fishes are popular in Sundanese cuisine of West Java, caught or raised in Lake Toba in Batak lands of North Sumatra, or taken from large rivers in Malay lands of Riau, Jambi and South Sumatra, or large rivers in Kalimantan. Popular fresh water fish among others, carp, gourami, catfish, pangasius, snakehead, trichogaster, climbing gourami, Nile tilapia, and Mozambique tilapia. Insects Unlike Thailand, in Indonesia insect is not a popular food ingredient nor widely available as street food. In Java, locals do catch, breed and sell certain species of insects, usually sold fresh or alive as pet bird feed. Nevertheless, traditionally several cultures in Indonesia are known to consume insects, especially grasshopper, cricket, termite, also the larva of sago palm weevil and bee. In Java and Kalimantan, grasshoppers and crickets are usually lightly battered and deep fried in palm oil as crispy kripik snack. Smaller grasshoppers, crickets and termites might be made as rempiak batter cracker which resembles insect fossil. During monsoon rainy season, flying termites are abundant being attracted to light bulbs to mate. Locals usually put a bucket of water under the lamp to trap the flying termites, pluck the wings, and roast the termites as additional protein-rich snack. In Banyuwangi, East Java, there is a specialty dish called botok tawan honeybee botok, which is beehives that contains bee larvae, being seasoned in shredded coconut and spices, wrapped inside banana leaf package and steamed. Dayak tribes of Kalimantan, also Moluccans and Papuan tribes in eastern Indonesia, are known to consume ulat segu lit, segu caterpillar or larva of sago palm weevil. This protein-rich larva is considered as a delicacy in Papua, and often being roasted prior of consumption. However, locals may also commonly eat the larva raw or alive. <inaudible> <inaudible> Spices and other flavorings Rempa is the Indonesian word for spice, while bumbu is the Indonesian word for a spice mixture or seasoning, and it commonly appears in the names of certain spice mixtures, sauces and seasoning pastes. Known throughout the world as the Spice Islands, the Indonesian islands of Maluku contributed to the introduction of its native spices to world cuisine. Spices such as nutmeg or mace, clove, pandan leaves, kaluwak and galangal are native to Indonesia. It is likely that black pepper, turmeric, lemongrass, shallot, cinnamon, candlenut, coriander and tamarind were introduced from India, while ginger, scallions and garlic were introduced from China. Those spices from mainland Asia were introduced early, in ancient times, thus they became integral ingredients in Indonesian cuisine. In ancient times, the Kingdom of Sunda and the later Sultanate of Banten were well known as the world's major producers of black pepper. The maritime empires of Srivijaya and Majapahit also benefited from the lucrative spice trade between the Spice Islands with China and India. Later the Dutch East India Company controlled the spice trade between Indonesia and the world. Sambal The Indonesian fondness for hot and spicy food was enriched when the Spanish introduced chili pepper from the New World to the region in the 16th century. After that hot and spicy sambals have become an important part of Indonesian cuisine, Indonesia has perhaps the richest variants of sambals. In the Indonesian archipelago, there are as many as 300 varieties of sambal. 
The intensity ranges from mild to very hot. Sambal evolved into many variants across Indonesia, ones of the most popular is Sambal Terasi sambal belikan, and Sambal Manga Muda unripe mango sambal. Sambal terasi is a combination of chilies, sharp fermented shrimp paste terasi, tangy lime juice, sugar and salt all pounded up with mortar and pestle. Dabu dabu is North Sulawesi style of sambal with chopped fresh tomato, chili, and lime juice. Traditionally prepared laboriously ground upon stone mortar, today sambals is also available as industrial processed products in bottles or jars. Tarasi or belican shrimp paste is also an important ingredient for flavoring, usually used in sambal, rujak, or various vegetables dishes. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Sauces and seasonings. Soy sauce is also an important flavorings in Indonesian cuisine. Ketchup asin salty or common soy sauce was adopted from Chinese cuisine, however Indonesian developed their own ketchup manis sweet soy sauce with generous addition of palm sugar into soy sauce. Sweet soy sauce is an important marinade for barbecued meat and fish, such as satay and grilled fishes. Sweet soy sauce is also an important ingredient for seamer, Indonesian stew. Peanut sauce One of the main characteristics of Indonesian cuisine is the wide application of peanuts in many Indonesian signature dishes, such as satay, gado gado, karatik, ketoprak, and pasel. All of these dishes applied ample of bumbu kakang peanut sauce for flavoring. Gado gado and satay for example have been considered as Indonesian national dishes introduced from Mexico by Portuguese and Spanish merchants in the 16th century. Peanuts assumed a place within Indonesian cuisine as a key ingredient. Peanuts thrived in the tropical environment of Southeast Asia and today they can be found roasted and chopped finely in many recipes. Whole, halved, or crushed peanuts are used to garnish a variety of dishes, and used in marinades and dipping sauces such as sambal kakang a mixture of ground chilies and fried peanuts for otak otak or ketan. Peanut oil, extracted from peanuts, is one of the most commonly used cooking oils in Indonesia. Bumbu kakang or peanut sauce represents a sophisticated, earthy seasoning rather than a sweet, gloppy sauce. It should have a delicate balance of savory, sweet, sour, and spicy flavors, acquired from various ingredients, such as fried peanuts, gula jawa coconut sugar, garlic, shallots, ginger, tamarind, lemon juice, lemongrass, salt, chili, peppercorns, sweet soy sauce, ground together and mixed with water to form the right consistency. The secret to good peanut sauce is, not too thick and not too watery. Indonesian peanut sauce tends to be less sweet than the Thai version, which is a hybrid adaptation. Gado gado is a popular dish particularly associated with bumbu kakang, and is eaten across Indonesia. Coconut milk Coconuts are abundant in tropical Indonesia, and since ancient times Indonesians developed many and various uses for this plant. The broad use of coconut milk in dishes throughout the archipelago is another common characteristic of Indonesian cuisine. It is used in recipes ranging from savory dishes, such as rendang, soto, gulai, mie koklok, sayur lode, gudig, and opor ayam, to desserts, such as es cendol and es dagar. Soto is ubiquitous in Indonesia and considered as one of Indonesia's national dishes. The use of coconut milk is not exclusive to Indonesian cuisine. It can also be found in Indian, Samoan, Thai, Malaysian, Filipino, and Brazilian cuisines. Nonetheless, the use of coconut milk is quite extensive in Indonesia, especially in Minangkabau cuisine, although in Minahazan North Sulawesi cuisine, coconut milk is generally absent, except in Minahazan cakes and desserts such as tart. In Indonesian cuisine, two types of coconut milk are found, thin coconut milk and thick coconut milk. The difference depends on the water and oil content. Thin coconut milk is usually used for soups such as sayur lode and soto, while the thicker variety is used for rendang and desserts. It can be made from freshly shredded coconut meat in traditional markets, or can be found processed in cartons at the supermarket. 
After the milk has been extracted from the shredded coconut flesh to make coconut milk, the ampas kalapa leftover coconut flesh can still be used in urap, seasoned and spiced shredded coconut meat mixed together with vegetables. Leftover shredded coconut can also be cooked, sautéed and seasoned to make serendang, almost powdery sweet and spicy finely shredded coconut. Karasik paste, added to thicken rendang, is another use of coconut flesh. To acquire a rich taste, some households insist on using freshly shredded coconut, instead of leftover, for urap and serendang. Serendang can be mixed with meat in dishes such as serendang dodging beef serendang or sprinkled on top of other dishes such as soto or ketan sticky rice. An example of the heavy use of coconut is barasa from Makassar, rice wrapped in banana leaf cooked with coconut milk and sprinkled with powdered coconut similar to serendang. Topic. Cooking method Most of the common Indonesian dishes are named according to their main ingredients and cooking method. For example, ayam goreng is ayam chicken and goreng frying, which denotes fried chicken. Mie goreng is fried noodle, ikan bakar is grilled fish, udang rebus is boiled shrimp, babi pongong is roasted pork and tumis kankun is stir-fried water spinach. Cooking methods in Indonesian kitchen are goreng frying either in a small amount of oil or deep frying with a lot of cooking oil, tumis stir frying, sangre sautéing. Roasting methods are bakar grilling usually employing charcoal, firewood, or coconut shell, pongong baked usually refer to baking employing oven. Other methods are rebus boiling and kukus steaming. The fire used in cooking can be either strong fire or small fire for slow cooking. Cooking nasi goreng usually employs strong fire, while authentic rendang for example requires small fire for slow cooking of beef, spices, and coconut milk until the meat is caramelized and all the coconut milk's liquid has evaporated. Traditional Indonesian dapur kitchen usually employs firewood-fueled kitchen stove, while the contemporary household today uses liquefied petroleum gas-fueled stove or an electric stove. The ingredients could be cut in pieces, sliced thinly, or ground into a paste. Cooking utensils are wajan wok, pengorengan frying pan, pansi cauldron, knives, several types of spoon and fork, partan shredder, kobik and ulikan stone mortar and pestle. Traditionally Indonesians use a stone mortar and a pestle to grind the spices and ingredients into coarse or fine pastes. Today most households use blender or food processor for the task. Traditional Indonesian cookingwares are usually made from stone, earthenware pottery, wood, and woven bamboo or a rattan container or filter, while contemporary cookingwares, plates and containers use metals, iron, tin, stainless steel, aluminium, ceramics, plastics, and also glass. <laughs> Regional dishes Topic. Jakarta Diverse and eclectic, Batawi cuisine of Jakarta draw culinary influences from Chinese, Malay, Sundanese, to Arab, Indian and European. Popular Batawi dishes include nasi uduk coconut rice, sayur asam sweet and sour vegetable soup, asinan salad of pickled vegetables, gado gado, boiled or blanched vegetables salad in peanut sauce, ketoprak, vegetables, tofu, rice vermicelli and rice cake in peanut sauce, and curic teller spiced coconut omelette. Born from a creole or hybrid phenomena, the Batawi cuisine is quite similar to the Peranakan cuisine. Topic. West Java A textural speciality of Sunda West Java is karadik, a fresh salad made with long beans, bean sprouts, and cucumber with a spicy peanut sauce. Lalab fresh vegetables served with spicy sambal dipping sauce is ubiquitous in Sundanese households and eating establishments. Other Sundanese dishes include mie kokok which is a beef and egg noodle soup, and soto bandung, a beef and vegetable soup with daikon and lemon grass. A hawker favorite is kupit tahu pressed rice, bean sprouts, and tofu with soy and peanut sauce. Kalenik roasted fermented cassava tapai with sweet coconut sauce and yulin roasted brick of sticky rice with peanut sauce are dishes usually eaten warm. Central Java 
The food of central Java is renowned for its sweetness, and the dish of gudig, a curry made from jackfruit, is a particularly sweet. The city of Yogyakarta is renowned for its ayam goreng fried chicken and klapan green rice flour balls with palm sugar filling. Surakartas solo specialities include nasi liwet rice with coconut milk, unripe papaya, garlic and shallots, served with chicken or egg and sarabi coconut milk pancakes topped with chocolate, banana or jackfruit. Other central Javanese specialities pasel peanut sauce with spinach and bean sprouts, lotek peanut sauce with vegetable and pressed rice, and opor ayam braised chicken in coconut sauce. Topic: <laughs> East Java. The food of East Java is similar to that of Central Java. East Java foods tend to be less sweet and spicier compared to the Central Javan ones. Fish and fish, seafood products are quite extensively, e.g. tarasi dried shrimp paste and pettis udang shrimp paste. Some of the more popular foods are lontong kupong tiny clams soup with rice cakes, lontong balap bean sprouts and tofu with rice cakes, sat klopo coconut beef satay, samanji surabaya marsalia leaves with spicy sweet potato sauce, pasel lele deep fried catfish served with rice and sambal, raan dark beef soup. Food from Malong includes bakwan malong meatball soup with one ton and noodles and arem arem pressed rice, tempeh, sprouts, soy sauce, coconut, and peanuts. <inaudible> Madura Madura is an island on the northeastern coast of Java and is administered as part of the East Java province. Like the East Java foods which use pettis udang, Madura foods add pettis ikan which is made from fish instead of shrimp. The Madura style satay is probably the most popular satay variants in Indonesia. Some of its popular dishes are sat ayam Madura chicken satay with peanut sauce, soto Madura beef soup. There is also a mutton variant of Madura satay, sat kambing Madura. Sup kambing mutton soup is also popular in Madura. As a leading salt production center in Indonesian archipelago, Madura dishes are often saltier compared to other East Javanese foods. Topic: <inaudible> Bali. Balinese cuisine dishes include laur, chopped coconut, garlic, chili with pork or chicken meat and blood. Bebek batutu is duck stuffed with spices, wrapped in banana leaves and coconut husks cooked in a pit of embers. Balinese sat, known as sat lilit, is made from spiced mince pressed onto skewers which are often made from lemon grass sticks. Babi guling is a spit roasted pig stuffed with chili, turmeric, garlic, and ginger. Basa ghee or basa rajang is a spice paste that is a basic ingredient in many Balinese dishes. Topic Aceh. Arab, Persian, and Indian traders influenced food in Aceh, although flavors have changed a lot their original forms. Amongst these are curry dishes known as kare or gulai, which are rich, coconut-based dishes traditionally made with beef, goat, fish, or poultry, but are now also made with tofu, vegetables, and jackfruit. The popular Aceh foods such as roti cane, mie Aceh, and nasi guri. North Sumatra Batak people use either pork or even dog to make saxing. Another Batak pork speciality is babi pongong in which the meat is boiled in vinegar and pig blood before being roasted. Another Batak dish, ayam namargoda, is chicken cooked in spices and blood. Another notable Batak dish is arsic, the carp fish cooked with spices and herbs. Lata rimba is strong pepper used by Bataks. West Sumatra Buffaloes are a symbol of West Sumatra and are used in rendang, a rich and spicy buffalo meat or beef dish, which is also the signature dish of Manangkabau culture. Padang food comes from West Sumatra, and they have perhaps the richest variants of gulai, a type of curried meat, offal, fish or vegetables. Padang favorite includes Assam padang, sour and spicy fish stew, sat padang, padang satay, soto padang, padang soto, and katapek sewa, katupat rice dumpling in vegetable soup. 
Dishes from the region include nasi kapau from Bukatinggi, which is similar to Padang food but uses more vegetables. Ampiang dadia, buffalo yogurt with palm sugar syrup, coconut flesh and rice, and bubur kampian, mung bean porridge with banana and rice yogurt, are other West Sumatran specialties. Traditionally, Minangkabau people adheres to Merantau migrating culture, and they are avid restaurant entrepreneurs. As a result, Padang food restaurant chains can be found throughout Indonesia and neighboring countries, likely making it the most popular regional dish in Indonesia. In outside West Sumatra such as in Java, most of Padang restaurants still use buffalo to make rendang, but claim as rendang sapi for selling purposes due to buffalo meat is more inferior and cheaper than cow meat. Buffalo meat is harder, so suitable for rendang with cooking time at least three hours, the texture is also coarse and the color is more red than cow meat even when is already cooked. East Sumatra The cuisine of east coast of Sumatra is referring to the culinary tradition of ethnic Malays of Indonesian Sumatran provinces facing Malacca Strait, which includes Riau, Riau Islands, Jambi provinces and coastal North Sumatra in Malayu Delhi areas in and around Maidan. Because of close ethnic kinship and proximity to Malaysian Malays, many dishes are shared between the two countries. For example nasi lemak, the national dish of Malaysia, and also nasi ulam are considered as native dishes in Riau and Jambi. Malay cuisine also shares many similarities with neighboring Minangkabau cuisine of West Sumatra, South Sumatra, and also Aceh, such as sharing gulai, Assam pitas, pindang, kari, lemang and rendang. This is due to the fact that the Minangkabau are culturally closely related to the Malays. Tempoyak fermented durian sauce and sambal belikan are the familiar condiments in both Sumatra and Malay Peninsula. Variants of Peranakan cuisine such as laksa spicy noodle and otak otak are also can be found in Riau Islands and Maidan. Seafood dishes are popular in Archipelagic Riau Islands province, while fresh water fishes from Sumatran rivers, such as patan, catfish, carp and gourami are popular in Riau and Jambi. Gulai ikan patan is a signature dish of Pekanbaru, while gulai katam crab gulai and nasi goreng teri maidan, maidan anchovy fried rice are the signature dishes of maidan. <laughs> South Sumatra The city of Palembang is the culinary center of South Sumatra and is renowned for its pempek, a deep fried fish and sago dumpling that is also known as empek empek. Pempek is served in distinctive kua kuko, a sweet, sour and spicy sauce made from palm sugar, chili, tamarind and vinegar. Pempek derivatives dishes are taquan soup of pempek dumpling, mushroom, vegetables, and shrimp, langong or pempek slices in omelette. Mie salur is a noodle dish with egg in coconut milk and dried shrimp, it is a palambing speciality. The cuisine of Palembang demonstrate various influences, from native Palembang Malay taste to Chinese and Javanese influences. Pempek is said to be the influence of Chinese fish cake akin to surimi, while the preference of mild sweetness is said to be of Javanese influence. South Sumatra is home to pindang, a sweet, sour and spicy fish soup made from soy sauce and tamarind. Pindang dishes usually uses either fresh water fishes and seafood as ingredients. Ikan brenkas is fish in a spicy durian-based sauce. Tempoyak is a sauce of shrimp paste, lime juice, chili and fermented durian, and sambal bua is a chili sauce made from fruit. <laughs> North Sulawesi Manado cuisine of Manahazan people from North Sulawesi features the heavy use of meat such as pork, fowl, and seafood. Woku is a type of seafood dish with generous use of spices, often making up half the dish. The ingredients include lemongrass, lime leaves, chili peppers, spring onion, shallots, either sautéed with meat or wrapped around fish and grilled covered in banana leaves. Other ingredients such as turmeric and ginger are often added to create a version of woku. Other Manahazan signature dishes are tinushuan, chicken tuturiga, rika rika and kakalang fufu. Foreign colonial influence played a role in shaping Manahazan cuisine. Brennaban from Dutch, Bruin, Brown and Boon, Bean is a pork shank bean stew spiced with nutmeg and clove. 
Manahazan roast pork similar to lechon in the Philippines or pig roast in Hawaii are served in special occasions, especially weddings. Other unusual and exotic meats such as dog, bat, and forest rat are regularly served in North Sulawesi region. Paniki is the bat dish of Manahasa. South Sulawesi Makassar is one of the culinary centers in Indonesia. Home of some Bugis and Makassar delicacies such as koto, konro, palabasa and mie kering. All of these Makassar foods are usually consumed with barasa, a coconut milk rice dumpling wrapped in a banana leaf, to replace steamed rice or ketupat. As a big fish market center, Makassar is also famous for its seafood. Various ikan bakar or grilled fish are popular and commonly served in Makassar restaurants, warung and food stalls, such as ikan balu bakar grilled milkfish. Sop sodara from pankep and kapuring from palopo are also famous dishes of South Sulawesi. Another popular cuisine from Makassar is ayam goreng Sulawesi celibes fried chicken. The chicken is marinated in a traditional soy sauce for up to 24 hours before being fried into a golden color. The dish is usually served with chicken broth, rice and special sambal chili sauce. In addition, Makassar is also home of traditional sweet snacks such as pisang epe pressed banana, as well as pisang ijo green banana. Pisang epe is a flat grilled banana which is pressed, grilled, and covered with palm sugar sauce and sometimes eaten with durian. Many street vendors sell pisang epe, especially around the area of Losari Beach. Pisang ijo is a banana covered with green colored flowers, coconut milk, and syrup. Pisang ijo is sometimes served iced, and often sold and consumed as iftar to break the fast during Ramadan. Nusa Tenggara With a drier climate in Nusa Tenggara archipelago, there is less rice and more sago, corn, cassava, and taro compared to central and western Indonesia. Fishes are popularly consumed, including sipat trichogaster, which is shredded fish in coconut and young mango sauce. Lombok Sasak people enjoy spicy food such as ayam taliwang which is roasted chicken served with peanut, tomato chili and lime dip. Palesing is a spicy sauce used in many dishes made with chili, shrimp paste, and tomato. A local shrimp paste called lengkari is used on the island of Lombok. Sares is made from chili, coconut juice and banana palm pith and is sometimes mixed with meat. Non-meat dishes include keller hot soup with vegetables, sarabuk vegetables mixed with coconut, and timun yurap cucumber with coconut, onion and garlic. In East Nusa Tenggara, majority of its inhabitants are Catholics, hence pork is commonly consumed. Popular Timor dishes are sa'i smoked meat usually pork, and katamak vegetable soup. <laughs> Maluku and Papua The Maluku Islands cuisine is rich with seafood, while the native Papuan food usually consists of roasted boar with tubers such as sweet potato. Various types of ikan bakar grilled fish or seafood are eaten with spicy kolo kolo condiment. The staple food of Maluku and Papua is sago, either as a pancake or sago kanji called papeda, usually eaten with yellow soup made from tuna, red snapper or other fishes spiced with turmeric, lime, and other spices. <laughs> Foreign influences Indian influences Indian influence can be observed in Indonesia as early as the 4th century. Following the spread of Islam to Indonesia, Muslim Indian as well as Arab influences made their way into Indonesian cuisine. Examples include Indian martabak and kari curry that influenced Sumatran cuisines of Aceh, Minangkabau, and Malay, in addition to Batawi and coastal Javanese cuisine. Some of Aceh and Minangkabau dishes such as roti cane, nasi biryani, nasi kebulai, and gulai kambing can trace its origin to Indian influences. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese influences 
Chinese immigration to Indonesia started in the 7th century, and accelerated during Dutch colonial times, thus creating the fusion of Chinese cuisine with indigenous Indonesian style. Similar Chinese native fusion cuisine phenomena is also observable in neighbouring Malaysia and Singapore as Peranakan cuisine. Some popular Indonesian dishes trace its origin to Chinese influences such as, bakmi, bakso, soto mie, soto, bakpao, nasi goreng, mi goreng, tahu goreng, somai, pempek, lumpia, nasi tim, kap kai, fu yung hai and swiki. Some of this Chinese-influenced dishes has been so well integrated into Indonesian mainstream cuisine that many Indonesian today might not recognize their Chinese origin and considered them as their own. Dutch influences The Dutch arrived in Indonesia in the 16th century in search of spices. When the Dutch East India Company went bankrupt in 1800, Indonesia became a treasured colony of the Netherlands. Through colonialism, Europeans introduced bread, cheese, barbecued steak and pancake. Bread, butter and margarine, sandwiches filled with ham, cheese or fruit jam, pafertjes, panakoke and Dutch cheeses are commonly consumed by colonial Dutch and Indus during the colonial era. Some of native upper-class Ningrat nobles and educated native were exposed to European cuisine. This cuisine was held in high esteem as the cuisine of the upper class of Dutch East Indies society. This led to adoption and fusion of European cuisine into Indonesian cuisine. Some dishes created during the colonial era were influenced by Dutch cuisine, including roti bakar grilled bread, roti buaya, salat solo solo salad, bistik jawa Javanese beef steak, seamer from Dutch s'more, sayur kakang mera brennabon, and sop buntut, many pastries, cakes and cookies such as q bolu tart, lapis legit spekak, spiku lapis surabaya, and kostengels cheese cookies come from Dutch influence. Some recipes were invented as Dutch Indies fusion cuisine, using native ingredients but employing European pastry techniques. These include pandan cake and clapper tart, coconut tart. Q cubit, commonly sold as a snack at schools and marketplaces, are believed to be derived from poffertjes. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence abroad. Conversely, Indonesian cuisine also had influenced the Dutch through their shared colonial heritage. Indonesian cuisine also influencing neighbouring countries through Indonesians' migration across the Straits to Malaysia. <laughs> Malaysia Because of their proximity, historic migrations and close cultural kinship, Indonesian cuisine also has influenced neighboring cooking traditions, most notably Malaysian cuisine. Indonesian influence is pervasive in the central state of Negri Sembilan, which was settled largely by Minangkabau people hailing from West Sumatra and is, thus, reflected in their culture, history and cuisine. Minangkabau cuisine influences is profound in Malay cooking tradition, as the result both traditions share same dishes, including rendang, gulai, asam pitas and tempoyak. Rendang is a typical example that has been well integrated into mainstream Malaysian cuisine and is now considered as their own, and popular especially during Hari Raya Adil Fitri. In the early 20th century, there are large influx of Sumatrans to Kuala Lumpur and other parts of Malaysia heartland, that led to the popularity of Nasi Padang originated from Padang City, West Sumatra not only in Malaysia, but also in Singapore. The Malay cuisine of southernmost state of Johor, reflects the influences of Javanese who settled there for over past two centuries. Popular Javanese origin dishes in Johor includes ayam panyet, nasi ambang, teller pindang, sayur lode, mi rebus and pechel. Topic. Thailand To a lesser extent, Indonesian cuisine also had influenced Thai cuisine probably through Malaysian intermediary such as the introduction of satay, from Java to Sumatra, Malay Peninsula, and reached Thailand. A chat Thai, Hakkad pronounced T, A grave T, is a Thai pickles which believed to be derived from Indonesian akar. It is made with cucumber, red chilies, red onions or shallots, vinegar, sugar and salt. It is served as a side dish with the Thai version of satay Thai. Netherlands 
During the colonial period, the Dutch embraced Indonesian cuisine both at home and abroad. The Indonesian cuisine had influenced colonial Dutch and Indo people that brought Indonesian dishes back to the Netherlands due to repatriation following the independence of Indonesia. C. Countess van Limburg Steerum writes in her book, The Art of Dutch Cooking. 1962, there exist countless Indonesian dishes, some of which take hours to prepare, but a few easy ones have become so popular that they can be regarded as national dishes. She then provides recipes for nasi goreng, fried rice, pisang goreng, battered, deep fried bananas, lumpia goreng, fried spring rolls, bami, fried noodles, satay, grilled skewered meat, satay sauce, peanut sauce, and sambal olek, chili paste. Dutch Indonesian fusion dishes also exist, of which the most well known is the ristafel, rice table, which is an elaborate meal consisting of many, up to several dozens, small dishes, hence filling an entire table. While popular in the Netherlands, Ristoffel is now rare in Indonesia itself. Today, there are many Indonesian restaurants in the Netherlands, especially in large cities like Amsterdam, Den Haag, Utrecht and Rotterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Meal times Indonesians might consume snacks or varieties of small dishes throughout the day. However, if separate scheduled larger meal is observed, they usually consists of sarapan or makan pagi breakfast, makan siang lunch is often the main meal of the day, followed by makan malam dinner. Mealtime is typically a casual and solitary affair, and might be observed differently across region. In western and central Indonesia, the main meal is usually cooked in the late morning, and consumed around midday. In many families there is no set mealtime when all members are expected to attend. For this reason, most of the dishes are made so that they can remain edible even if left on the table at room temperature for many hours. The same dishes are then reheated for the final meal in the evening. Most meals are built around a cone-shaped pile of long grain, highly polished rice. A meal may include a soup, salad or more commonly vegetables sautéed with garlic, and another main dish. Whatever the meal, it is accompanied by at least one, and often several, relishes called sambals. Especially for Javanese family, on the table, it is also common to always have chips, that can be karupuk, rempiek, or any other chips to accompany the meal. In eastern Indonesia, such as on the islands of Papua and Timor, where the climate is often much drier, the meals can be centered around other sources of carbohydrates such as sago or root vegetables and starchy tubers. Being east of the Wallace Line, the ecozone, and hence the flora and fauna, are quite different from those of the islands to the west, and so the foodstuffs are, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Feasts Tumpung <laughs> 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 Many Indonesian traditional customs and ceremonies incorporate food and feast, one of the best examples is tumpung. Originally from Java, tumpung is a cone-shaped mound of rice surrounded by an assortment of other dishes, officially chosen as Indonesian national dish in 2014. Traditionally featured in Slamitan ceremonies, the cone of rice is made by using bamboo leaves woven into a cone-shaped container. The rice itself can be plain white steamed rice, uduk rice cooked with coconut milk, or yellow rice rice colored with kunyat, i.e., turmeric. After it is shaped, the rice cone is surrounded by assorted dishes, such as urap vegetables, fried chicken, seamer beef in sweet soy sauce, teri kakang little dried fish fried with peanuts, fried prawns, teller pindang marbleized boiled eggs, shredded omelet, tempe auric sweet, dry fried tempeh, perkettle kentang mashed potato fritters, perkettle jagging corn fritters, sambal goreng ati liver in chili sauce, and many other dishes. Nasi tumpung probably comes from an ancient Indonesian tradition that revers mountains as the abode of the ancestors and the gods. Rice cone is meant to symbolize the holy mountain. The feast served as some kind of thanksgiving for the abundance of harvest or any other blessings. Because of its festivities and celebratory value, even now tumpung is sometimes used as an Indonesian counterpart to birthday cake. Nasi padang. Having nasi padang in festive hadong serve style provides opportunity to sample wide array of padang food in a single setting. 
Nasi padang, padang style rice is the steamed rice served with various choices of pre-cooked dishes originated from Padang City, West Sumatra. It is a miniature banquet of meats, fish, vegetables, and spicy sambals eaten with plain white rice. It is the Manangkabau's great contribution to Indonesian cuisine. After the customers are seated, they do not have to order. The waiter with stacked plates upon their hands will immediately serves the dishes directly to the table. The table will quickly be set with dozens of small dishes filled with richly flavored foods such as beef rendang, various gulai, curried fish, stewed greens, chili eggplant, curried beef liver, tripe, intestines, or foot tendons, fried beef lung, fried chicken, and of course, sambal. A dozen of dishes is a normal number, it could reach 14 dishes or more. Nasi padang is an at-your-table, by-the-plate buffet. Customers take—and pay for—only what they have consumed from this array. Rice stoffel Another Indonesian feast, the rice stoffel from Dutch, meaning rice table, demonstrates both colonial opulence and the diversity of Indonesian cuisine at the same time. The classic style rice stoffel involved serving of up to 40 different dishes by 40 male waiters, barefoot but dressed in formal white uniforms with blankon traditional Javanese caps on their heads and batik cloth around their waists. In contemporary Indonesian cuisine, it has been adapted into a Western-style prasmanan buffet. Topic: <laughs> Prasmanan. When attending the reception of an Indonesian traditional wedding party, office lunchtime meeting, a seminar or dinner gathering, one usually will find themselves queuing to Indonesian prasmanan, a long table filled with wide array of Indonesian dishes. A prasmanan is quite similar with rice stoffel but minus the ceremonial waiters and usually served fewer choices of dishes compared to its flamboyant colonial predecessor. It is an Indonesian buffet as it employs a long table with a wide range of dishes, both savory and sweet, served on it. It can usually be found in wedding ceremonies or any other festivities. The layout for an Indonesian wedding ceremony buffet is usually, plates, eating utensils spoon and fork, and paper napkins placed on one end, followed by rice plain or fried, a series of Indonesian and sometimes international dishes, sambal and krupuk shrimp crackers, and ending with glasses of water on the other end of the table. <laughs> Beverages Non-alcoholic beverages The most common and popular Indonesian drinks and beverages are teh and kopi coffee. Indonesian households commonly serve teh manis sweet tea or kopi tubruk coffee mixed with sugar and hot water and poured straight in the glass without separating out the coffee residue to guests. Since the colonial era of Netherlands East Indies, plantations, especially in Java, were major producers of coffee, tea and sugar. Since then hot and sweet coffee and tea beverages have been enjoyed by Indonesians. Jasmine tea is the most popular tea variety drunk in Indonesia, however recent health awareness promotions have made green tea a popular choice. Usually coffee and tea are served hot, but cold iced sweet tea is also frequently drunk. Kopi luwak is Indonesian exotic and expensive coffee beverage made from the beans of coffee berries which have been eaten by the Asian palm civet Paradoxorus hermaphroditus and other related civets. Teh botol, bottled sweet jasmine tea, is now quite popular and locally competes favorably with international bottled soda beverages such as Coca-Cola and Fanta. Kopi susu coffee with sweetened condensed milk is an Indonesian version of cafe au lait. S. kalapa muda or young coconut ice is fresh drink which is made from chilled young coconut water, coconut flesh and syrup. It is among favorite beverage in Indonesia. Fruit juices are very popular. Varieties include orange guava mango soursop and avocado the last of these being commonly served with condensed milk and chocolate syrup as a dessert-like treat. Durian can be made into ice cream called S. durian. Many popular drinks are based on ice and can also be classified as desserts. 
Typical examples include young coconut S. Muda, grass jelly S. Sinkau, chendol S. Chendol or S. Davit, avocado, jackfruit and coconut with shredded ice and condensed milk S. Teller, mixed ice S. Champur, kidney beans S. Kakang Mera, musk melon S. Blewa, and seaweed S. Rumput Loud. Hot sweet beverages can also be found, such as bajigor and bandrek which are particularly popular in West Java. Both are coconut milk or coconut sugar based hot drinks, mixed with other spices. Sakotang, a ginger-based hot drink which includes peanuts, diced bread, and pakar china, can be found in Jakarta and West Java. Wedong jahe hot ginger drink and wedong rond a hot drink with sweet potato balls are particularly popular in Yogyakarta, Central Java, and East Java. Alcoholic beverages As a Muslim-majority country, Indonesian Muslims share Islamic dietary laws that prohibit alcoholic beverages. However, since ancient times, local alcoholic beverages were developed in the archipelago. According to a Chinese source, people of ancient Java drank wine made from palm sap called tuak palm wine. Today tuak continues to be popular in the Batak region, North Sumatra. A traditional Batak bar serving tuak is called Lapo Tuak. In Solo, Central Java, CIU, a local adaptation of Chinese wine, is known. Bottled Brem Bali Balinese rice wine, is popular in Bali. In Nusa Tenggara and Maluku Islands the people also drink palm wine, locally known as sopi. In the Manahasa region of North Sulawesi, the people drink a highly alcoholic drink called Kap Tikus. Indonesians developed local brands of beer, such as Bintang beer and Angkor beer. Eating establishment In Indonesia, dishes are served from a fine dining restaurant in Five Star Hotel, a simple restaurant downtown, humble street side warung under the tent, to street hawker peddling their jarabak cart or pikulan carrying using rod. Restaurant and warung In Indonesia rumah makan means restaurant, while warung means small and humble shop. From these eating establishments, a warteg and rumah makan padang are particularly notable for their ubiquitousness in Indonesian cities and towns. A warteg or warung tegel is a more specific warung nasi, established by Javanese people from the town tegel in central Java. They sells favorite Javanese dishes and rice. The wide array of pre-cooked dishes are arranged in glass-windowed cupboard. They are well known on selling modestly priced meals, popular among working class such as low-skilled laborers in the cities. While Rumah Makan Padang is a Padang restaurant, a smaller scale Padang eateries might be called Warung Padang. Most of Indonesian restaurants are based upon specific regional cuisine tradition. For example, Rumah Makan Padang are definitely Minangkabau cuisine. Sundanese song restaurant or colloquially called as curing restaurants are selling Sundanese dishes. This includes Batak's Lapo, Manado and Balinese restaurants. While other restaurants might specifically featuring their best specific dishes, for example Ayam Goreng Mbok Barak, Bakmi Gajah Mata, Satay Sanayan, Raan Setan Surabaya, Pempek Pak Radin, etc. Street food. Indonesian street food are usually cheap, offer a great variety of food of different tastes, and can be found on every corner of the city. Street and streetside vendors are common, in addition to hawkers peddling their goods on bicycles or carts. These carts are known as pedagong kaki lima. These food hawkers on carts or bicycles might be traveling on streets, approaching potential buyers through residential areas whilst announcing their presence, or stationing themselves on a packed and busy street side, setting simple seating under a small tent and waiting for customers. Many of these have their own distinctive call, tune, or noise to announce their presence. For example, bakso sellers will hit the side of a soup bowl using a spoon, whereas nasi goreng sellers announce themselves by hitting their wok. In most cities, it is common to see Chinese dishes such as bakpao steamed buns with sweet and savory fillings, bakmi noodles, and bakso meatballs sold by street vendors and restaurants, often adapted to become Indonesian Chinese cuisine. 
One common adaptation is that pork is rarely used since the majority of Indonesians are Muslims. Other popular Indonesian street food and snacks are somai and batagor abbreviated from bakso tahu goreng, pempek deep fried fish cake, bubur ayam chicken kanji, bubur kakeng hijau mung beans porridge, satay, nasi goreng English, fried rice, soto mie soto noodle, mie ayam chicken noodle and mie goreng fried noodle, teoj goreng mung bean sprouts and noodle salad, asinan preserved vegetables or fruits salad, laksa, kurik teller spicy omelette, gorengan Indonesian assorted fritters and bakwan fried dish of bean sprouts and batter. Indonesian street snacks include iced and sweet beverages, such as es cendal or es davit, es teller, es singkau, es dagar, es champur, es patong, and es puter. Indonesian cakes and cookies are often called jajanan pasar market munchies. <laughs> snacks. Q Indonesia has a rich collection of snacks called Q cakes and pastry, both savory and sweet. Traditional Q usually made from rice flour, coconut milk, coconut sugar and mostly steamed or fried instead of baked. Traditional Q are popularly known as Q basa wet Q, that has moisty and soft texture because of rich coconut milk. The Q curing dried Q is local name for cookies. Indonesia has rich variations of Q, both native origin or foreign influenced. Popular ones include Bika Ambon, Q Pisang, Q Cubit, Klapan, Owned Owned, Nagasari, Q Pandan, Lupus, Lemang, Lemper, Lontong, Tahu Isi, Gedik, Rasols, Pastel, Lumpia, Bakpa, Lapis Legit, Sos, Pafertjis, and Bolu Kukus. Traditional crackers Traditional crackers are called krupuk, made from bits of shrimp, fish, vegetables or nuts, which are usually consumed as a crunchy snack or to accompany main meals. These crispy snacks sometimes are added upon the main meal to provide crunchy texture. Several Indonesian dishes such as gado gado, keradik, ketoprak, lontong sayur, nasi uduk, asinan and bubur ayam are known to require specific type of krupuk as toppings. There are wide variations of krupuk available across Indonesia. The most popular ones would be krupuk udang prawn crackers and krupuk kampung or krupuk puta cassava crackers. Other popular types include krupuk kulit dried buffalo skin crackers, emping malinjo genetum nemin crackers, and kripik chips or crisps, such as kripik pisang banana chips and kripik singkong cassava chips. Rempiek, is a flour-based cracker with brittle of peanuts, anchovies or shrimp bound by crispy flour cracker. Ranghinong or intip Javanese is rice cracker made from sun-dried and deep-fried leftover rice. Fruits Indonesian markets abound with many types of tropical fruit. These are an important part of the Indonesian diet, either eaten freshly, or made into juices such as jus alpacat, desserts such as es bua and es teller, processed in savory and spicy dishes like rujak, fried like pisang goreng fried banana, cooked into cakes such as kyu pisang or bika ambon, sweetened and preserved such as sale pisang and manisan bua, or processed into kripik crispy chips as snacks like jackfruit or banana chips. Many of these tropical fruits such as manga mango, mangus mangosteen, rambutan, sempedic, nangka jackfruit, durian, jambu air, duku longsot, jeruk bali pomelo, baliming carambola, kedendong and pisang banana, are indigenous to Indonesian archipelago, while others have been imported from other tropical countries, although the origin of many of these fruits might be disputed. Klenking longan were introduced from India, samanka watermelon from Africa, kesamek from China, while alpacat avocado, sawo, markiza passion fruit, sursik soursop, nanas pineapple, jambu biji guava and pepaya papaya were introduced from the Americas. Many of these tropical fruits are seasonally available according to each species flowering and fruiting seasons. While certain fruits such as banana, watermelon, pineapple and papaya are available all year round. Today, Indonesian markets is also enriching with selections of home-grown non-tropical fruits that is not native to Indonesia. 
strawberry, melon, apple, pear and dragonfruit are introduced and grown in cooler Indonesian highlands such as Malang in mountainous East Java, Punchak and Lembong near Bandung, to mimic their native subtropics habitat. In the last few years, fruit chips have been more and more various. In the old times, banana and jackfruit chips were the most common, but now Indonesian fruit chips are also made from strawberry, apple, dragonfruit, pepino, watermelon, melon, more. Malang, a city in East Java, is the center of fruit chip production aside from tempeh chips. Banana and coconut are particularly important, not only to Indonesian cuisine, but also in other uses, such as timber, bedding, roofing, oil, plates and packaging. Banana leaf and janor young coconut leaf are particularly important for packaging and cooking process, employed to make pepis, lontong and ketupat. Health Nutrition <inaudible> 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 Much carbohydrate intake in Indonesian cuisine comes from rice, while in eastern parts of Indonesia, yam and sago are common. Indonesian protein intake comes from soy bean products that are processed into tofu and tempeh. Chicken eggs, poultry and meats are also consumed. Most of the fat intake comes from cooking oil, coconut oil of fried dishes, coconut milk, peanuts, as well as meats and offals. However, according to a WHO nutrition study, compared to global diet average, Indonesians consumes less protein, vegetables and fruits. Which means most of Indonesian diet consists heavily of carbohydrate, which is mostly contributed by high consumption of rice. The campaign for a well-balanced diet is promoted ever since. Some Indonesian fruit and vegetable dishes such as fruit rujak, gado gado, karadak, pasel, lalab, kapke, tofu and tempeh are known as healthy foods with low fat and high fiber. Tempeh, for example, is known to be a vegetarian substitute for meat. On the other hand, some dishes, especially gorengan deep fried fritters and those dishes infused or caramelized with coconut milk, such as rendang and gulai, might taste succulent but are rich in saturated fat. The goat meat and offals cooked as gulai and soto are definitely categorized as unhealthy dietary choices as they are rich in saturated fat and cholesterol. <laughs> Food safety. The authentic traditional Indonesian home cooking is freshly made and consumed daily with minimal or no processed, canned or preserved foods, which means there is a minimal amount of preservatives and sodium. Most ingredients are bought fresh very early in the morning from local traditional markets, cooked around the late morning and consumed mainly for lunch. The leftovers are stored in the cupboard or on the table covered with tudung saji weaved bamboo food cover to protect the food from insects or other animals, all in room temperature to be heated and consumed again for dinner. Traditionally, Indonesian dishes are rarely stored for long periods of time, thus most of these dishes are cooked and consumed in the same day. Some exceptions apply to dried, salted, and processed food. For example, dry rendang may still be safe to consume for several days. Modern refrigeration technology is available in most households. Topic: <inaudible> Hygiene. While most of Indonesian grocery products and food served in mid to upper scale eating establishments maintain food hygiene standard ranges from good to acceptable, regulated and supervised by Badan Pengawasan Obat Dan Makanan, Indonesian Food and Drug Administration. Some warung traditional food stalls and street vendors might have poor hygiene. The tropical microbes also might contribute to food poisoning cases mostly gastroenteritis, especially among foreigners during their stay in Indonesia. It is advisable to drink bottled or boiled drinking water, or choose cooked hot food instead of uncooked room temperatured ones sold by street vendors. For example, when consuming food sold by street vendors, consuming hot cooked mie ayam or soto is much safer than having gado gado or fruit rujak. See also <laughs> Notes <laughs>